Joke. <laughs> e- either one. doesn't matter. Oh, moving fluid on Jody. Okay, okay, so again, just to kind of recap, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a just quick demo on how to move lymph through the feet. So this would be somebody comes in and they're either complaining of a foot that is swollen or they're complaining of a lymphatic issue. Uh, oftentimes when, it, feel free to get situated, um, oftentimes when a client is struggling with a fluid issue, there are a couple dangers to that. One, cardiovascular, which is the theme of our weekends. Like if somebody has a physical backup of fluid, that's a red flag for a lot of deeper cardiovascular stress. So referring them to a physician might be in the cards. Yeah, we need to keep that in mind as far as like just red flag nests because uh, cardiovascular and lymph go hand in hand. They are two fluid systems that play off each other a lot. So if the vascular nature of the capillaries and the veins are not creating that fluid return, that could be part of the equation as well. But like we talked about uh, just recently, you know, the idea that powerful stressors can trigger massive swelling. So how would we address that in a client on the table? First thing that we're gonna do is we're going to uh, get the solar plexus and adrenal, our first two points under control. We had talked about the adrenal gland as representing the stress hormone, cortisol, that ability for the body to process stress effectively, but then also the adrenal glands as a powerful reflex for sex salts and sugars, those three S's that will help to regulate fluid as well, and then solar plexus for overall pain and discomfort. What we're gonna do after that is we're going to work three very specific areas of the feet. We're gonna work the dorsal surface because that's going to be our lymphatic portals. We're going to walk the ball of the foot, which is also lymph, but more center of the chest. And then we're going to do that deep ankle portion of the routine. Make sense? Okay, so that should constitute a really quick half hour. Feel free to gather and all that stuff. Okay, so we're gonna start with our solar plexus. And again, we're right at that diaphragm guideline. If you wanted to look at the, the chart on the wall real quick, we have the diaphragm guideline in between that green and yellow section. So in between horizontal zone two and horizontal zone three, that diaphragm guideline in line with the third toe, that ditch, that, that space, we're just gonna hold that point for about 30 seconds, which is very much like how, again, acupuncturists would take pulses. This is kind of like how we would take a pulse, except we're not feeling for an actual pulse, we're feeling the tissue texture. Mm -hmm. Okay. After our solar plexus, then we're gonna go to our adrenal. Here's a fun hack that I discovered while I was teaching this, this month. So normally we would find the adrenal gland in between the first and second toe, halfway between the diaphragm guideline and the waistline guideline. There's that nice little ditch. Or, this is new content, uh, you could palpate for the proximal head of the first metatarsal and slide right into it. Oh my oh, God. Magic, right? <laughs> Do that again. So proximal head of first metatarsal, slide right into the adrenal. Yeah, so much less complicated, but you are required to learn both versions, yeah. not just the quickie cheat version. Um, so just something something fun, something new, because practice is always changing and evolving. Okay, um, Because lymph is also moved by heat, it may be appropriate for you to do two rounds of hot towels. Yeah? Um, so if you wanted to pass me a dry towel from that end and two wet towels from that end, we'll actually do that real quick. Excellent. So we have our, and for those our new students, we're going to drape over the top of the foot, two inch flap for the toes, wrap under, tuck under, wrap over, fleece immediately comes over top in order to seal in that heat, and then press. A lot of clients will ask me for conditions, especially with pain, should I use heat or ice? Um, unless you want to numb an area and stop inflammation, you should never use ice. Um, I am of the school of thought that's a little bit more energetic. Mm -hmm. Even if heat is present in an area, um, you want to calm, you want to relax, you want to open, and you do that with heat. 
unless there is like a like somebody sprains an ankle not strains like sprains like damaged ligament territory there's pain because of fluid pressure like that would be a case for ice but most of the time heat even when you know certain inflammatory conditions like if a client comes in and they're like i run hot like that's okay you're still getting hot towels because it's amazing uh and it's definitely part of that that relaxation process okay so we're going to then dry off the foot same wrap around the foot for the hot towel just a little bit of shimmy dryness now in the cardiovascular, you were talking about the leukemia and the blood right. and lymphatic. Mm -hmm. I know cardiovascular and lymphatic go together. Yeah. So we, explain more on the cancer lymphatic leukemia. Uh, so cancer lymphatic leukemia, all of that territory, be, the physical cells mm -hmm. are earth. They're, they would be the, the element of earth in that and they would be related to the blood because mm -hmm. that is technically part of the blood. Mm -hmm. The lymph is the fluid transport, so it's okay. kind of like it's kind of like the, the cells are the subway car, but the lymph is the actual subway, mm -hmm. the, the tunnel, yeah, mm -hmm. that the, the subway cars have to go through. Mm -hmm. So when we think of the, the difference between, you know, the actual blood production aspect of leukemia, mm -hmm. that would be cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. When we think about the actual, like, lodging of the cells and the overgrowth and the channel that the cells are coagulating mm -hmm. in, that would be lymph. But it's not like in the case of leukemia that all the white blood cells are immediately going to the lymphatic system. They're mm -hmm. found everywhere. It's just that's where they measure, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So also relaxation techniques are very appropriate for swelling, for like really, really crazy uh, like amounts of swelling because look what we're doing. Very fast, very vigorous motions that will help to free and stimulate fluid. Um, it, in this case, if you wanted to be technically lymphatic, you could even go up instead of down. But from a reflex perspective, the reason why we do calf massage and we pull downwards as opposed to go upwards is because we're not really, we don't have the intention of moving fluid here. We're more massaging the muscle and getting a feel for tissue texture, confirming, you know, if the feet are cold, is the calf cold? Or is it just the extremity that's compromised? You know, that type of information. But if you wanted to, you definitely could do more of those lymphatic strokes if you felt it was necessary. Then we're going to be doing our push-pull. Very important relaxation technique because of what we're doing for the calf. We're literally pumping that soleus and the gastrox. Okay. Then we do our heel rotation. Heel rotation important because the heel represents all of those lower body reflexes. So stimulating and flushing the nerve that would be controlling kind of that fluid balance. Mm -hmm. When we think of the nerves which root into muscles, the muscles themselves act as secondary hearts to the lymphatic system. So if the sciatic nerve is compromised and it's freezing up the muscles, that could be part of the lymphatic situation as well. I'm having numbness in the ankle and more medial. Okay. So when you do that, mm -hmm. but I, I had barely, barely could get out of my vehicle today because of my sciatic on this side. Yeah, so that's, that's totally part of it. Um, so what I would do first is if you wanted to start with the actual direct pump of the dorsal ankle, that would be a nice way to start. So we're going to push the foot back slightly to open up those channels and then use our fingers to squeeze and pump that fluid down. And that's a very direct lymphatic technique because we are choosing to push fluid. Three, and we would do that in three vertical sections, three times each for a total of nine passes. And although Jody has a lot of fluid in her body, her feet aren't like technically swollen, so it's not as, but like when you have a foot this big, you'll see it, you'll see the fluid. Then we wanna do our metatarsal shake to open up the bones and to open up the lymphatic system. And then we'll actually walk down each of those dorsal valleys. So we're going to take a fist, push the foot back again to open. Notice how we're pumping. Everything, everything in this set is pumping in that way. 
then fingers come over top and we're going to get into those dorsal valleys just once. If you feel like a particular dorsal valley is super congested, you could always go more than once. It's up to you. Okay, so we're pumping, we're pumping, we're leading the fluid to where we want it to go. And then because of that, after we're done with the dorsal valleys and we give another metatarsal shake, I'm going straight to the ankle because after we push the fluid to where we want it to go, we want to make sure that the deeper structures of the foot are open to channel that fluid back up. So we're going to do a little bit of Achilles tendon effleurage. Those medial sacral reflexes on the calcaneus three times, representing that tailbone area. Switch hands. Lateral calcaneus, representing all the glute muscles. And then, if you wanted to get a close-up of the, the ankle rotation, we're going behind the lateral malleolus, starting at the top of that crescent, using our outside hand to create that pump again, that rotation. And my index finger is just tracing around, finding points along that hip joint reflex in order to deactivate it. And there, there is a, a significant amount of tension through there, and that's okay. Okay? And then we'll finish it all off with another pump, the dorsal pump, to really get into those direct groin and lymphatic reflexes. And that would be, like, if you just wanted to leave it there, you totally could, and just repeat that same series, pump, 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 wiggle, down, 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 wiggle, inside, outside of calcaneus, rotate, pump. Like that, if you wanted to do that like as a series of three, that would be like just keep pumping, keep moving. You totally could. But I'm going to finish it with horizontal zone two. And there are a couple different reasons for that. So when we talk about horizontal zone two on the plantar surface, if you wanted to, to come around... Um, horizontal zone two on the plantar surface is not just going to be our breast, chest, kind of upper body lymph, but it's also going to be, from a foot reading perspective, the emotional space. And when we think of the lymphatic fluid as being emotionally triggered, water in the body, wherever it goes, emotions are present, we want to clear horizontal zone two because of that emotional state, not just the physical lymph. into a one hour session mm -hmm. by just repeating yeah. for someone that's really massive. If you wanted to um, if you wanted to do this set, yeah. like start with this set and then maybe go back and walk the digestive reflexes, maybe get into the cuboid notch, spine, mm -hmm. toes, and then do the set again, just oh, kind right. of butchering up the routine and copy pasting where needed. Like mm -hmm. that could be that could be a thing. Yes. Okay. Then we finish with the relaxation techniques. Yay, relaxation techniques. Mm -hmm. I try to incorporate those more than myself. Mm -hmm. And again, if you felt the need to physically pump the fluid upward instead of downward, you totally could. As a general rule with lymphatic work, you could pull the fascia, but don't go deep because lymph doesn't travel deeply. Um, you want to just very surface on the skin, move the fluid. standard is like not more than a nickel's worth of pressure okay then we go to our push pull any specific questions or other things you guys had curiosity about as we move to the other foot and do that same routine so lymphatic and swelling, sometimes people present with red, which is more of a fire sign. Yeah. Um, so are there any other elements or techniques that you would incorporate besides the pumping and moving the lymph? If there's a lot of fire, that's another element on top of 
right. swelling. Mm -hmm. This is something that you see a lot. In fact, um, Cody, who works here at the Institute, um, he actually had this in a couple different clients this week, which was fascinating. He's like, Sam, I don't understand. There's there's so much water in the foot, but there's also mm -hmm. so much heat. Um, and it's because the body is trying to evaporate the fluid. It's very much like the body produces a fever when there's stagnation in the lymph in order to heat it up and get things moving, but then it produces coldness when there's too much inflammation and the body is going into kind of a freak out response, which is why people often go from hot to cold just to balance out that, that heat as well as the kind of uh, chill that happens accordingly. So it might be really neat to kind of like see, watch that bruise right there. I've been getting a bruise on that side of my ankle for a couple months now. And see how that changes throughout the session. Um, with, with stagnant heat, um, I wouldn't necessarily change the routine at all. Mm -hmm. um, unless like you wanted to go back and you notice the heat is coming from somewhere specific. Mm -hmm. um, you would need to you would need to kind of put more pieces of the story together from that standpoint and see like is it water that's fighting fire is it fire or that's fighting water like which one was Starting there first, first. Yeah. yeah and is the heat actually medicinal being produced by the body and is that something we need to add to uh, which you could do by you know adding more vigorousness to the technique also you know spicy foods uh, herbs that are heating, like the gingers, the chai, uh, anything like that. But then, you know, if it's a, if it's a water that's fighting fire, you know, the fluid is in response to the deep heat that's happening, it would be the reverse. So you would want to cool them down. You would want to basically help the fluid. And the reason why I'm doing this first is because there's just this I saw it on the other foot. There's the space on the spine that's like right in line with the bruise that I just Is can't it not touch. Sacrum? It's like L1. Oh, interesting. I've been having discomfort. Like I keep reaching behind my back to hit that area. Yeah. Would a tattoo have anything to do with the lymphatic because of the ink? Um, not necessarily. In terms of like some people will say yes. In my experience, ink is really benign. It's because a tattoo is something you get once and the body then digests it over time. I would be more concerned about the quality of water that somebody is drinking more so than the tattoo. Just my two cents. Okay, so we're moving again that dorsal aspect of the lymph. So I hit my ankle about a month and a half ago in the same spot but a little more medial. Yep. And then again, I've hit it, but it's now more on the anterior portion, which is kind of strange because it's almost in the same spot. And I don't realize when I'm doing it, but it's been continual for a couple months now. Yeah. That's okay. Which I've been eating differently and running and doing all kinds of fun things. <laughs> Different ways of moving forward, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, could be. I've been hitting it hard. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Literally. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to go down those dorsal channels. So there's a little bit more congestion on this side. So what I'm doing is I'm pairing just a little bit of, again, pump, mm -hmm. yeah, to that to that area that needs the wow. the stuff. Yeah. And there's a little bit of binding here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some traction. I'm going to take my hand over the top and actually pull the foot slightly. Where are you feeling the binding? Like in the ankle? Right here. Oh, okay. So a little bit of traction and a little bit of just like dorsal pressure down on that area just to get like things tightness. moving. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the left is crazy. So with this, the body is actually telling me that it needs to be pushed, not pulled. So on this spot specifically, I'm going to push the foot forward and allow that compression to take place. And that's all it is. Like, you're listening to the body. Okay, and we got it. Was that a twitch in the leg? What was yes, that? I've yeah, I've been having twitches. Okay. And spasms in my calves. Which is fine, because it's, it's when we think of fire as like that heat, that spasmodic tendency, the body's trying to get the fluid to move. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. But it's just like, hey! Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, that was exciting. <laughs> muscles aren't muscles aren't halfway. It's either they're on or they're off. Right. Okay. I'm gonna figure something right. There you go. So then we're gonna do our uh, our calcaneus work. So medial surface of calcaneus once, twice, thrice. Switch hands. Lateral surface, <laughs> which represents what? Oops. Reproductive area. Does Part of reproductive? Phone is telling me to rotate. I was trying to get too creative. <laughs> I, was to make it, I was making people sciatic. 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 Uh, ovaries. Yeah, but what Sorry. What else is in here? In the calcaneus. From, oh, from a muscular standpoint. Sciatic. Oh uh, um, what is it? Glutes. 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 But isn't that closer to the malleoli? It's in between. Okay. So when you think of, like, if this is hip joint, if okay. lateral malleolus is hip joint, and then, and then the Achilles attachment is that sacral area, uh -huh. then it would be the bridge between the sacral area and the hip joint, which is the glutes. Mm -hmm. okay. So what it's just about... Quads and all of those? Quads would be cuboid notch. Okay. Okay. And then the plantar surface of the cuboid notch is the calves. Calves, right. Okay. okay. So now we're getting into that lateral malleolus space, and we're going with our outside hand to create that movement. There's a lot more tension on, on this side and she's she's giving us like a really deep, not okay moan. So we're, we're gonna park it right here uh, and we're just gonna hold that point. My middle finger is on it. Do you find that sometimes what people equate to sciatic, muscle pain, et cetera, is excess fluid? Yeah. So I'm, I'm finding this more where we just can't get an answer, and then once they're able to move the fluid, it's better. Did you just hear my low back pop? Yeah, that was your low back? Yeah. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> Everything oh, is awesome. And you can see the fluid. You can see, like, the shiny fluid happening. Yeah, I can feel it. Right through there? Oh, yeah. Like, you can see the sheen that's happening on the skin. That's so good. Yeah, so triggering just all that water movement. Then we finish with our dorsal pump, and then we'll go to zone two to finish it off. And that will be that. We'll finish with relaxation techniques, and then do another round of hot towels. And that would be the recommended lymph routine. My apologies to the three people watching. I probably made them seasick. <laughs> no, you're good. They probably need more on my No, not you. I mean on the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're happy, Rob. I'm glad you're happy, Rob. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was my main focus. Now going to zone two, clearing each of those vertical zones in line with the toe. <clears throat> so this area, you can see a little bit of darkness, and that's actually, like, not to be... It's not dirty, but it is ground in dirt. Uh, the callus of that area is very prominent, and so it's like soaking up all of the dye from her shoes. Uh, and so that's that's also something that rigidity in the upper body. When we think of zone two as <laughs> dorsal lymph, or not dorsal, the um, upper lymph drainage. So the fact that she has a two-two callus means that that area has been somewhat compromised in terms of restriction. So we want to just be aware of, yeah, we want to be aware of just the body presenting that that also connected lymphatic marker. So okay. she's been trying to protect that area? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
So if I have a boyfriend, it was almost three months. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Has nothing to do with anything whatsoever. Read her future. Read her feelings future. And emotions, just feelings and emotions. Feelings and emotions. <laughs> feelings and emotions. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the the banging of the ankle every two seconds. <laughs> And we can see the bruising has actually dissipated. Like, it's still very present, but it's not as black and blue. It's more of, like, a brown color. Mm. So that's cool. Yay, color change. Yeah, it's interesting. It almost feels like my ankle has an air pocket in it now. Like, it's kind of like where you were. Where it's medial, mm -hmm. and then it's also lateral in the back. You know what I mean? Space. Cool. You know, that is a really cool point because when you when you say air pocket, like I know what you're feeling and sometimes for people who haven't experienced that openness, mm -hmm. that that sensation can actually feel wrong because it's like, well, that mm -hmm. feels odd. Yeah. Like I want to pop it. I want to get that air out of there. But that support <clears throat> is actually... That space is what's mm -hmm. good. I just felt a the back of my, like, sacrum cool. kind of area. Okay, let's grab two more hot towels, and then I've got, I'll use the same dry towel. It's okay. Perfect. Thank you, Dork. Okay. Then we'll, we'll leave these rather steaming. Right hot? They're not, I mean, they're not super hot, but they're hot. It feels in the mood. They're hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you were talking about the recosity in the cardiovascular portion. Yeah. Um, in the deep vein. I know you're starting distal, so you're not really concerned. You said to always... Right. The, the problem with like a DVT, a clot, or a deep vein thrombosis, it's, it's a problem because it's not only like directly painful, mm -hmm. but you don't want any liability Perfect. from that perspective. So if they have a clot that's being monitored, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I, I would, n if they're insistent on a session, I would not touch the caps. And I would not do any of the relaxation techniques that would, Jostle. yeah, okay. potentially move that clot. I would stick just with the feet um, and only stimulate the nerves just to be safe. Like so I've had, just walk the reflexes. Yeah, just walk the reflexes from that standpoint. Um, you know, it's the same thing with pregnancy. Like the the myth about reflexology inducing labor or being harmful for the pregnancy is a myth but I still don't want to jostle the body so much because that's just uncomfortable when you have another human inside of you and you're suffering from morning sickness. Like, it's it's practical stuff. So same thing with the clot. Like, if there's a clot that could potentially move to the brain if you press it too hard, mm -hmm. like, they're walking around with that. So their body weight and their contraction is is stimulating to that area. So I'm not like worried, worried about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried about like if the physician is scared and they find out that they have gone to a bodywork practitioner that has touched that area, that's liability. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to eliminate that at all costs. Mm. Like I've worked on people with a history of clots and then I find out, oh, they had a clot, mm. you know, at the time that they were seeing me. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks yeah. for not being an informed client, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, was I worried? No. Did did I feel like a hot, red, inflamed spot on the calves? No. Whatever your thumb is, is what I was asking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we would end with solar plexus adrenal. Then after this, we will take a quick break. Cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see y'all later. <coughs>